For this week's review, I'm playing Conquest of the Crystal Palace, one of those games on the NES that are pretty good, but not many people seem to know of. Maybe part of it is because it was made by Asmic, the company responsible for games like... Well, I'm looking at the list, and the only one I've heard of is Super Highlight and LSD on PlayStation. Well, we're off to a frickin' awesome start, aren't we? At least Conquest of the Crystal Palace is a good game, though, compared to anything with the name Highlight in it. Okay, I've only played a bit of the first one, so I'm just going off what I've heard. But I keep being around the bush. I need to talk about Conquest, so that's what I'm going to do now. You play as a teenager named Farron, who needs to travel to this palace to reclaim it from some evil guy named Zaris. Supposedly, Zaris infiltrated the castle years prior, when Farron was an infant, and this Farron guy is a prince, and a dog was the one that was saved him. The dog's name? Zap. You know, if I ever get a dog, I might name him Zap. I like that name. So as Farron, you have five levels to go through in order to confront Zaris. Zap travels along with you, which can be a huge help at times. He also assists you right from the beginning by giving you one of his three special crystals. One gives you a higher jump, one maxes out your health bar, and one increases your attack power. I thought the health would be the best bet, but after playing the first stage, I feel that the upgraded jumping ability came in handy a bit more. Why is that? Well, let's talk about the gameplay and I'll segment into that. Conquest is an action game with a bunch of platforming added in for good measure. Farron has a sword and can swing it by pressing the B button. Most enemies die in one strike, but there are a few exceptions. When enemies die, many will drop coins, which can be used in the shop, a sword, which gives your weapon a wave-like projectile for a short time, cherries, which restore a bit of life, a weird-looking wallet, which gives you more money than the standard coins, and other weapons. All weapons that are dropped are of limited use, and honestly, some aren't even worth it. For example, the fireballs are much weaker than your sword, although you do get a higher range. It's really up to your playstyle on which weapon you may want to use. But back to the upgrades. The attack upgrade just isn't worth it to me. I thought the health would be the best option, but you can purchase this upgrade in the shops that appear throughout the game. It's relatively cheap, too, and then all you have to do afterwards is buy another herb to increase the health to that maximum. And it's only a quarter of your health bar, so it's not like it's really improving your health too much. But the jumping? The jumping boost in the shop, from what I've read, is temporary. Yet the boost you get from choosing that crystal in the beginning of the game is permanent, so you'll always be able to jump higher. To me, this is just the best choice. But again, you may think differently. But how about this shop? You can be traveling through the stage and find a lone woman just standing there yelling hi at you. Once you touch her, you'll be brought into the shop, where you can use that hard-earned money to purchase various items. These consist of the maximum life increase, life increases, extra lives, and temporary weapons. You can also purchase life increases for Zap, the helpful doggy that can be summoned. Let me talk about Zap for a bit. By pressing down an A, you can cycle through your inventory. This is how you can select weapons other than your sword. At all times, you have your sword and zap, but any additional weapons will be shown here, although the ammo counts are never shown, so you just have to be careful or count on your own if you want to know how much ammo you still have remaining. Anyway, back to zap. When you select him, he appears, bounding back and forth and trying to do damage to your enemies or take the attention off of Farron. The most you can do is buy the dog whistle and then you can press up to direct attacks, but other than that, all movements are seemingly random. Personally, I kept zap fully charged for boss battles, because that's where I needed him the most. You might need him though, because this game is pretty challenging. The first level isn't so bad, but you'll slowly start getting used to the fact that almost at all times you'll be mobbed by enemies. In the first stage, the random waterfall gushes don't help matters either. Add in the cliffs and you may get frustrated right from the beginning. The second level really ramps up the challenge, when you get a bunch of birds dropping bombs, hands that are indestructible that pull you towards cliffs, and a bunch of dropping spiked snake heads that are also invulnerable. And in a few moving platforms and infinite deadly dropping smiley faces? You'll be saying, what the hell is going on here? It was a miracle I was able to defeat this stage, but in level 3, with a few cheap deaths when you're falling and I don't realize there's a pit underneath, and I was done. Well, not running out of time to get this review published, but that's my fault, not the games. One really strange thing about the game is the jumping and attacking mechanics. When you jump, swinging your sword cancels the jump and drops you down to the ground. This occurs even if you're holding down the A button. It's a bit strange and takes some getting used to. In addition, you can activate a cool sword attack by swinging your sword and then quickly pressing the other direction. There's a neat swinging sound effect that goes along with it. Personally, I never found use for it, but perhaps it's stronger than your normal attack. I really don't know. The music and visuals are pleasing. Music has that oriental theme to it and it fits the game well. The visuals are all clear and the enemies have a nice level of detail to them. Again, 
Since this is a game that was released later in the NES's lifespan, in 1990, you'd expect some good graphics, since developers now have had a good t amount of time messing around with the hardware. Overall, Conquest of the Crystal Palace is a fun yet challenging game that doesn't get the recognition it deserves. It's got a fun premise, a nice shop system, a fair difficulty, and good music and graphics. It's not perfect by any means, with, you know, a few cheap deaths, but it's still enjoyable. Give this one a shot if you're looking for a good NES platformer. Final score? 8 out of 10. This is Reaper. Happy fragging.